All right, well, let's talk about getting a headphone mix. Now, in the headphone box out there, their left ear is going to receive from the Yamaha auxiliary number one, and their right headphone is going to receive from the Yamaha auxiliary number two. So whatever we send to those, that's what, that's what they're going to hear. So let's start this. Let's start with letting them hear their own microphone. So that sound, the way we're going to do that is we're going to monitor, let them hear them right off the board. So on channel 7, we're going to access the auxiliary. So for number 7, the way we access its auxiliaries, all 12 of them if, if we need, is we select the channel. We're going to go up to auxiliary and select auxiliary 1. And there's two ways we can boost it on channel 7. First is that encoder mode, we can toggle it from pan to auxiliary. What that does is these blue knobs are the encoders. So if I go to channel 7, by kind of default, the main purpose is, is going to be as a panning knob. But if I hit auxiliary, it turns it, it, it lets you boost the signal of auxiliary 1 on channel 7. The more visual way to do it is to, to change the faders to be a, from a standard fader mode is to, to into um, an auxiliary mode. So <clears throat> this reflects um, how high each channel is turned up on, on auxiliary one. So if I select auxiliary one, I go to channel seven in auxiliary mode. I pull this up. That's essentially just turning up the knob, so to speak, of auxiliary one for this. Same with AUX2, since I want them to hear their own microphone in each ear, I need to turn up both of those. If we want to see if we're successful, we'll change it back to fader mode before we forget. We can go over to the layers and hit master. And if we see a signal here, we can see that signal is getting through to auxiliary one and auxiliary two. Let's go back to this. Um, okay, so they can hear their microphone. Oh, I forgot to make it pre-fader. Let's show you how to do that. Under display, we're going to hit, or I'll select, we're going to hit this display button until we see channels 1 through 24. There it is. So channel 1 through 24, it shows you how much is turned up, and when we come to number 7, you'll see it's turned up. By default, it's on post-fader. So using <clears throat> the enter key, once I hit the enter key, this is going to toggle to being a, oops, it's going to toggle off. I need a down arrow, I guess, to, then it gets pre-faded. Um, and that, I guess that was AUX2. Let's go back to AUX1. You'll see now it says AUX1, channels 1 through 24. Channel 7 is turned up, but it's post-fader. So we hit this button, enter. And enter is going to toggle it to be pre-fader. Okay, so now they hear their microphone. And uh, if we, for some reason, need to turn up or down their primary fader, then it's not going to goof up their headphone mix. Adjusting the preamp, however, will change their headphone level. All right, let's talk about the Pro Tools side. This is going to be a little tricky. Uh, I need to hold down Alt. <laughs> it's going to be tricky. Tricky part. There we go. I think I got it. Hold in Alt and go up to um, the sends and assign something to but one of the tracks to bus nine and ten. So as soon as I let go, we get get this fader all or this little mixer up here. This is going to be our Q mix fader for sending from this session any sounds they need to sing along with drums, piano, guitars, whatever. So we're going to hold Alt again and hit, hit one little the letter P, which would make it a pre-fader. We're just going to make this mixer independent of this mixer down here. This mixer is going to be our mix. This is going to be their mix and their headphones. So I'm going to hold Alt again and hit the one little letter P. And then they're all <coughs> blue, so they're selected. Okay, so these are going to 9 and 10. We need to create a new stereo auxiliary track stereo, I don't know if you can see that it looks kind of blurry on my monitor so that created a new track over here 
could name this Q C U E. So there it is. <clears throat> so we need this is kind of a, a master fader for all the Q mix that goes through our headphones. So we need to, it to listen to those all those little faders along the top. So that's kind of that number is going to have to correspond. So input would be bus number nine and ten. And output, and you know, all these go to one and two. This is going to go to number three and four. So one and two here are going to correspond to 25 and 26, and three and four respond to uh, 27 and 28. <clears throat> all right, so if we did our work right, we should be able to go to that layer, <coughs> uh, make sure that we're in fader mode, not on. Mode. I should be able to pull up 25 and 26, turn it back to encoders back to pan so that I can pan their headphones out and I can hear a stereo mix. So everything, pull up, pull, pull up our fader here. Okay, so if I hit space bar, and start pulling up these faders, we're going to hear in our studio monitors what they would be hearing in their headphones. So there's bass, guitars, Let's just pull up the overheads and the drums. So everything you would need for the headphones you just pull up in this little mixer and there they have it. <coughs> so this is their headphone mix. Let's, let's check it out. So we can hear it, we'll see if they can hear it. Uh, so I'm going to choose AUGS1. I'm going to change my faders to be auxiliaries. So I'm going to go AUGS1. This fader needs to go up. AUGS2. This fader needs to go up. There we go. And we need them to be uh, pre-faders. So AUGS1, channel 27. Be pre faded. And AUX2 needs to be pre faded. Whew, <laughs> we're almost there. And I'll, sh I'll show you why that's helpful. Um, toggle the, the faders back to be normal faders. Uh, so now what we have is we engineered it so that we can hear, uh, so that we can hear the headphone mix on these two faders on um, 27 and 28. And we can hear everything from the bottom half of the Pro Tools session on these two faders on that bottom half there. Anything we turn down we're going to hear. So if I pull down that voice then we hear it. I mean it disappears but it doesn't affect <coughs> the headphone mix. All right, well, I hope that's helpful. And um, I've seen other engineers do this similar thing, treating a couple of channels as their own mix and then treating two separate channels just to receive sound from an auxiliary little mixer sort of up here. So that's the general idea. I hope you get it. Uh, that, that's all I got, and I hope this is helpful. We'll uh, see you back in class, guys.